It might not look like it, but this is 75 miles off the coast of Ireland, and you're aboard the famous diver support vessel Dark Star. The reason we're here is because 120 meters below us, there's a massive wreck showing on the seabed survey. It's so far offshore and so deep that it'll never have been dived before. We're all hoping that it's gonna be the missing liner, HMS Memora, requisitioned by the Royal Navy and then sunk in 1918 by UB-64. I'm lucky enough to be one of the first divers in, although we're given the job of making sure that the lazy shot goes in for the others. Once in the water, conditions look great. Even though I've got my scooter, it's still going to take me a long time to get down to 120 metres. As we go deeper, the water starts to change colour. You can see it getting darker in the video, but the line's still there to guide us to the bottom. The colour's changed again. There must have been a layer of sediment up shallower. We're now about 40 maybe 50 meters, and the first job we've got to do is to secure the lazy shot. I'm putting the prosec on the main shot line and the other diver is going to take off the lazy shot and attach it to the prosec so when we come up it will be easy to release. Still got a long way to go. This bit of the dive seems to take ages. Getting close to the bottom now. Next task is to take my strobes off and attach them to the shot line. These are absolutely essential, as without them, getting back to the shot line would be really difficult. That bit of admin over, the wreck starts to come into view in all its glory. 
I'm keen to get more light. It's absolutely pitch black down here. Unfortunately, my main torch in my left hand doesn't work. It's a real pain, which means that I'm left with only one video light for illumination. I do have a spare in my pocket, but I make the decision that I've got enough light from the video light, and I'm really keen to go and try and find the bridge. So I head off. There's loads to see down here. Look at those windows just are going over the top of them here. But I'm not hanging around. I'm on a mission. I definitely want to get to that bridge. I've dived loads of really big wrecks and one of the problems can often be that it's difficult to make sense of them. You need to find something that identifies a specific feature and once you've got that, the rest of the wreck will fall into position. At this moment of the dive, I haven't found anything so I'm desperately looking for something that will make sense. These mooring bollards, and what could be a mast. Maybe this is the bow, that's what I'm thinking. So I decide to go and try and follow it, see if I can find anything. If it's the forward mast, might even have the bell on it. Fingers crossed. And then the scooter suddenly stops. A load of net has got jammed into it. You see it's, uh, it's wrapped around the prop. Luckily there's not very much, so I pull it off and I'm away again. At this point I should have realised where I was. That's clearly a prop shaft with a coupling on it. But I was probably still had a bit of adrenaline after the, uh, the net a few moments before. Anyway, follow this along. And that's, I'm going to eventually realise I'm actually at the stern of the wreck. Which is exactly where I don't want to be. No idea why I'm persevering on here. It's clearly hull outside of the wreck. Then I see the prop and a big mountain of steel. Clearly this is a stern. I'm really, really unhappy with myself. So turning round, I gun the scooter and I'm heading back completely opposite direction, hoping to get to the bridge and maybe the bow. A bit further along, I meet the other diver. He's clearly made the same mistake as me. So 
small bit of underwater comms later. I've let him know. And I'm on my way again. The good news is I now know where I am. This is the starboard side, which is resting on the seabed. And I'm traveling along the side of the wreck, keeping my eye out for anything that may have fallen off. That may give us a clue as to, uh, to allow us to identify it. Then I see these. At first I think they might be a steam whistle, but then I realize that these are shells. Finding shells is great news. We know the memorial was armed. And if the shells, almost certainly there's gonna be some guns somewhere. So this could be the first clue in identifying the wreck. As I'm going along here, you can see the uh, hardwood decking off to my left-hand side. Don't know what those things are. Give them a quick glance, move on. There's various other bits of non-ferrous stuff around here. I suspect I'm getting close to where the bridge must be. And then, and then I spot this. Those are two pedestals. There's other bits and pieces around there. That one's clearly a helm. This has got to be the bridge. As I look around, there's all sorts of other interesting bits and pieces, but not really very much time to take them in. And then I spot this. That's incredible. Completely intact engine order telegraph. It's got the pedestal, got both handles, been on the seabed for over a hundred years. It's absolutely amazing. You just don't get to see that. Moving away from it, there's other things as well, including another telegraph head. Once again, there's loads of other non-ferrous bits and pieces around. It's absolutely incredible. I can't tell you how rare it is to see this sort of stuff on a shipwreck, and it's all there. It's clear this wreck has never been dived. I'm also looking for other things. I'm still progressing towards the bow, looking perhaps, you know, maybe you can find the bell, that would be the icing on the cake. But I'm also aware that I'm running out of time. Every minute I'm down here incurs a huge decompression penalty. So I feel under pressure to make the most of the time I've got. That's why when I see this gun in front of me, I barely give it a second glance. It's a pity, because this is really the confirmation that this is the Memora. Guns and ammo, that's it for certain.
back at the other telegraph when all of a sudden my video light goes out. I'm in the dark. My torches haven't performed well on this dive. I'm pretty much at the end of my bottom time anyway. So it's time to head back to the uh, shot line. Fortunately, my strobes are there, marking the way. You can hear me gunning the scooter. It's great to know where that shot line is, because that's the route to home and safety. As I get closer, I realise my strobes, which were pretty much first on, have dropped down the line. So rather than meeting the line 10 or 15 metres above the bottom, I've got to dip back down again to try and get them out of where they've become entangled in the wreck. I'm cursing myself. This is an extra minute or two. It's probably going to result in another 10 or 15 minutes of deco. But frankly, I don't want to leave these strobes down there. It's too much risk when the shot line comes up that we'll get entangled and therefore I won't see them again. So I undo the strobes and head for my first decompression stop as quickly as I can. I like to get off the bottom as quickly as I can. My computer often objects to this, which is why you can see it telling me to slow down. But I reckon the depth change down there isn't that great. And I want to get up to that deco stop as quickly as possible. I'm at my first deco stop, so I'm going to accelerate my deco. I'm going to push the set point up to 1.5. I do that both on my unit and also the off-board computer that I've got on my right hand wrist. Well that's it, that was pretty much done. Just a small matter of three or so hours of decompression. I hope you've enjoyed this video and found it interesting. If you have, why not check out some of my other ones? It'd also be appreciated if you can like it and subscribe to my channel. Thank you.